Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cosmic Drugs. I was just uh, sitting watching a crime documentary because that's what I like to do in my free time, as most middle-aged women. Her arms were cut off. Her legs were cut off. Her ears were cut off. Her tongue was cut off. Her eyeballs were plucked out. They like to watch, uh, you know, videos about people murdering other people. I don't know what the fuck it is. Maybe it's Pluto Scorpio shit. But I just heard an astrologer's wet dream. In the year 1980, on Wednesday the 9th of July at exactly 11.54 p.m., a little girl named Jody Ann Arias was born in the city of Salinas, California. And I was like, oh, fuck yes, motherfucker! Cha-ching! Cha-ching! So I got Jody Arias's birth time. And for those of you that don't know, Jody Arias was one of the most popular people on the news for a while because she murdered her ex-boyfriend. On June 4th, 2008, Jody Arias killed Travis Alexander by stabbing him 29 times, slitting his throat ear to ear and shooting him in the face. All this happened in the confines of his master bedroom and bathroom. After Jody and Travis had indulged in an afternoon of kinky sex and naked photo sessions. And how I'm gonna frame this video up, I think. I think I'm just gonna talk and then I'll cut at certain parts and insert clips to like show almost proof of what I'm saying because I'm pretty familiar with the Jody Arias case, but just looking at the birth chart, it just confirmed so many things. So let me pull up her chart. Then can you still see me? Okay. All right, I'll, I'll roll with it like this. So this is Jody Arias's chart. And how funny, her last name is Arias and her fucking rising sign is Aries. It's kind of like the same thing. That kind of just blowed my mind. Um, and this is her Placidus chart. And I have so much to say about this chart, but I'm going to like try and contain myself and like, you know, go piece by piece. The reason why I like to use Placidus charts is for this very reason. Let me get my drawing tool out. Draw. So you see a uh, Virgo? You see how Virgo isn't attached to any house? You see how Cancer is attached here? is also attached here. She got double cancer, whoo! Leo is attached here, but uh-oh, uh-oh! Virgo doesn't have a home, uh-oh! What the fuck does that mean? That means that her ruling planet, her chart ruler, Saturn, fucking Jupiter, all don't have a home. They're intercepted, which means they're not working up to par, up uh, to the best standards. Let me erase some of this. Um, and you can only see this with Placidus charts. You can't see it with equal. You can't see it with a uh, whole sign. So I'm team Placidus, but I'm not going to get into that whole, whole spiel right now. So because Jody is an Aries rising, and I'm going to use this video as a learning experience for people. Because Jody is an Aries rising, the ruling planet of her whole chart is Mars. Mars is almost exactly conjunct her descendant at 29 degrees Virgo. Now, even if Virgo wasn't intercepted, 29 degree any planet is that planet is put under a lot of pressure, under a lot of pressure. And when it's your chart ruler, there's so much pressure to perform. It's almost like the feeling that I get with 29 degree uh, planets is like an actor when they're right about to go on stage, like Virgo Mars is ready to go into Libra. It's ready to go to the new set, the Libra set. They've been done with Virgo. Like I'm sick of playing this role. I'm excited to get to the new grade, almost like even switching levels. Like when you're a junior, you can't wait until you're a senior. Like you're, you're like anxious, whatever, ready to get going. But the original reference I was referring to is like, say you're like an actor and you're, you're right about to go on stage. The nerve, the nerve, that is like a, an imprint in Jody's life, in my impression. And what I want to say too, let me take a step back. This is for entertainment purposes only because I know I'm dealing with like legal shit here. 
And just for uh, people that are just learning astrology, everything I see in this chart, every aspect placement that I'm going to be talking about doesn't definitively mean that 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 made her a cold-blooded murderer. No, these planets that we get assigned at birth, they could be they could be used in different ways. These planets use you. Are you going to let the planets use you or are you going to work with the planets because you can be manipulated by the planets in the negative way? But just like you can be manipulated by the planets in a negative way, you can be manipulated by them in a positive way. It's up to you as the soul how you how this plays out. You're the lead actor. These are like your parts are what part are you going to play? What part are you going to pay more attention to? Apparently, Jody Arias played way more attention to the darker things in her chart than the light, and I'll show you what I mean. So, all right, I talked about the Mars. It's on her exact almost exactly conjunct her descendant, which means it's opposing her ascendant. Right off the bat, that shows me that she has this sex appeal. This sex appeal, like people are attracted to her. They see that that sexual part of herself because Mars can rule sex. Um, and when it's at 29 degree Virgo, Virgo, a lot of people don't know this, but Virgo is very sexual, very sexual, that innocence, but they're not really innocent. But like, you know, so she has that raw sexuality about her. She was a good looking girl. Um, another thing that could play into her looks is she's got Lilith conjunct Pluto. Let me find my drawing thing. Lilith conjunct Pluto in the seventh house in Libra. In Libra. You want to know what this screams off to me right away? Yo, she's going to kill her partner, bro. She's going to kill her partner. And I know that sounds like so fucking crazy because if you saw this placement in any regular person's chart, you wouldn't just automatically go and say that. But for her, that's how it played out. Lilith is the darker aspect of yourself. Pluto is death, death and rebirth. When they're conjunct in the seventh house in Libra, both having to do with relationships and other people, for her, she straight up killed that motherfucker because this says that she needs to be in control. She needs to be in control in her relationships and she will kill to keep that position of power. Pluto rules power, control as well. Lilith wants to be in control at all times. If you go back to the mythology of Lilith, if you believe in all that, Lilith was Adam's first wife. She wanted to fuck Adam on top. She wanted to be the boss bitch, like whoosh, whip Adam into shape. Like she wasn't submissive like Eve, little bitch. No, I'm kidding. Lilith isn't submissive. Lilith wanted to be in control on top and she got kicked out of Eden because of it. Cause she was a whore, whore. But so this is how it played out. And look, she's a cancer, right? Let me step back. I don't know if I'm going to be including an eclipse right now. I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I might have to edit this together to like make it make sense, but let's look at her cancer placements. Ma'am, were you crying when you were shooting him? I don't remember. Were you crying when you were stabbing him? I don't remember. How about when you cut his throat? Were you crying then? I don't know. Jody Arias was a cancer. In the fourth house at that, like, oh my God, it's home. It's happy in cancer. And it was said that she had a good home life. They couldn't understand why Jody would murder somebody because on paper everything looked fine she didn't have a traumatic childhood she had a loving family and that kind of shows that but not really not for her so she has all this energy and cancer squaring lilith and pluto in the seventh house so let's take all the negativity, all not negativity, all the negative traits of cancer. 
which is what? Manipulative. The guards were not even allowed to have contact with her because she was, she was presumed to be so manipulative mm -hmm. that she could suck. Her powers were so strong. She's such a, you're right. She's like the plant in the little shop of horror. She's horrors, still doing you know? it behind bars. Controlling, it, not on the outside, it doesn't seem like they're controlling, but they are. They are. Get you a fucking cancer and think if they're not clingy. Because a clingy person is almost just like control because they need to cling on to make sure that you're not doing something they don't want you to do. Okay, she was so absolutely engrossed with him. Uh, if she could not get him on that telephone before going into her work, she would not go into work. She had to know where he was, what he was doing, everything. I mean, she ran the show. She was a manipulator here, not him. She was very manipulative, very clingy, very obsessive. Tracy says Arius also admitted to stalking her ex-boyfriend in his backyard. She said she would lie awake in bushes and watch him. And if she was ever caught, she would tell him she was there to get her social security card. Obsessive is another negative trait of cancer. And when, so those are already negative traits of cancer. When you get it squaring that shit in the seventh house of relationships, dude, that is fatal attraction. That is fatal attraction, bro. Oh my God. And also Mercury is retrograde. Even if Mercury wasn't retrograde, I would be saying this because it's making the squares to Lilith and Pluto. She's a lying motherfucker. She's a liar, but she's a she's good at lying. Whoa. You know, there's nothing like watching Jody Arias on that witness stand. I mean, it is a one woman show. And now we are gonna go to a woman who knows this performer. Cause a lot of people feel she is performing on the stand very well. She knows how to lie. She knows what to say to make people believe her. Jody is confronted with this in, in, in uh, the interrogation room and she still denies it. And she still is, is just acting like nothing happened. You're just not acting right, Jody. You're acting like somebody who's guilty. So, you tell me. There's a certain way people act. How did I act? Okay. It was not what like. You think? It's not like TV. It's not anything like that. It's not what you see in the movies. Is it because I'm not crying? No. It's not because of that. What is it? I mean, I'm not going to change how I act. No, so obviously you can't change the way you're acting. Well, I, no, I mean, I am who I am. Okay, but... you're you're sincere in the way you're acting. Well, how is you're it? just you're just not telling the truth. How is it different? After Jody failed her attempts to extract inside knowledge on the best way to behave in order to appear innocent, she then attempts to explain why she hasn't been able to appear innocent. She learns from trial and error how to make people feel comfortable. Cancers always make want to make people feel comfortable, but that doesn't mean that they're a good cancer. Are you a good cancer or a bad cancer? Are you a good witch or a bad witch? She's a bad witch because, you know, even with these squares too, that could also mean that she was into dark magic. I think she was into dark magic. Look at that fucking eighth house, boy. Look at that eighth house, boy. I'm jumping ahead of myself, though. Let's stick to the cancer shit more. She was known by Travis, and she, the guy's name that she killed, his name was Travis, Travis and Travis's boys and his friends all said how Jody was manipulative and obsessive and they scared them. Labeled the crazy stalker ex by all of Travis's friends. And although Travis agreed, he would continue having sex with her out of pure convenience. She would show up unannounced on countless occasions, sometimes in the middle of the night. She was a scary bitch and fuck yeah, you don't want to piss off a cancer, bro. <coughs> This is around the time where she became very possessive of him. Very possessive. She just had to sit right by him. She didn't appreciate when he was talking to another female. After a while, friends Chris and Skye staged an intervention of sorts. We were just telling him all the things that we were worried about with her, and I said, she's scary, there's something wrong with her. And I said, Travis, I'm afraid we're gonna find you chopped up in her freezer. The need to be in control in her relationships is very important. And if she even senses that she is losing grip of control over anything, there's going to be adverse emotional effects on her. Because look at this. Because look, her 
Mars is squaring her moon. It's a wide orb, but it's still fucking squaring it. So when she feels like she's out of control, her Mars is triggered. When her Mars is triggered, her moon is triggered. When her moon is triggered, her Mars is triggered. What's Mars? Mars is the warrior. Is the warrior for the sun. What's the moon? Your emotional state, how you feel on the inside. So if she even gets any taste of distress, whether it be emotionally or even outside in the, like, whatever, if she perceives it with her eyes, mind, Mercury, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. She's gonna fucking, oh my God, do anything to get that control back. And in her case, she murdered to get her control back. And if you paid attention to her case, she lied throughout it. Arius's version of what happened that day has changed several times. First, she claimed to have no idea who committed the crime. Later, she described to 48 Hours how Alexander had been murdered in cold blood during a home invasion. Remember what I said? Her uh, Mercury being retrograde, squaring those planets in the seventh house? She's a liar. And she's a good liar. She's a good liar. Well, some will beg to differ that. But she lied very meticulously and she analyzed what she was going to lie about she has all that uh virgo energy even though it's intercepted so she really thought it out she well she tried to at least and once she realized that one story wasn't working she reanalyzed she had to reprocess her approach and she changed her story but when the trial began her attorney shocked everyone by changing her defense yet again. This time, she claimed that she had killed Alexander, acting in self-defense. Now, let's not fuck around. The only reason why this case got a lot of publicity, publicity, don't mind my three degree mercury. Today, Junior! The only reason why this case got major publicity is because of how good looking she was. Let's not beat around the fucking bush, all right? She's hot, okay? And you want to know why she's fucking hot? Not only because she has Mars uh, opposing her ascendant, but that Lilith, even though Lilith isn't really connected, like conjunct any of her major um, planets, it's still squaring her sun. It's still in a fucking set. It's still in the seventh house. So that just gives somebody raw, sexual, ooh, like Lilith draws you in especially in Libra, like it gets what it wants in relationships. It like, but it's like a, it's almost like Scorpio energy. She sees her target and she'll fucking, whew, she'll snap to get it. She will literally lure you in with her eyes. And, you know, it showed her sexual appeal showed and she even lured all the fucking camera attention to her. But what's detrimental about having this Lilith conjunction with Pluto in the seventh is that there are some darker things to her sexual nature, and we'll talk about her eighth house in a minute, but there's a, there's a big need for pleasure, pain, seduction, all mixed in. Like She likes that darker, sadistic type of sexual experience. She wants to be in control. Maybe she'll let other people control her in like a dominatrix way. But that's all for show. She's not really being controlled by you. She's letting you think that she's being controlled. And that's a stupid ass male for thinking that you even have that control to begin with, with a cancer woman. And oh God, a cancer woman. Are you kidding me? I like the play. That's fun. Yeah, if you need to you know, handle me, I'll handle me. If you need to be handled, you'll be handled. Oh, I know. And I know you are being handled, but... Like, if I had to put this one before the other, I like being handled. <laughs> I like being handled. But, yeah, I totally will handle you. And she's got her moon and Venus and Gemini. Dude, she's very mercurial. She knows how to work her mind. She's not dumb. She is not dumb. Some may beg to differ that, too, but she is not. Her Mars and her moon and Venus are, like, mercury-ruled. She's analyzing everything. 
She's analyzing everything. She's working both with her mind and with her emotions. And that's deadly. That's deadly. Really, it's not, it's not a good sign. Not a good sign. Like, like talking about her Mars squaring the moon again. So a normal person would be able to feel an emotion and not act on that emotion because they have that separation there. Like, oh, I may be feeling this way, but like, it's, I'm just feeling this way. It's not like I have to do anything about it. Like, I'm just going to suck it up. Pfft, not Jody. not Jody. As soon as she feels something, she feels like she needs to act on it, especially with a 29 degree Mars. Like it's, it's just waiting to do something. It's waiting to feel useful. Like it, it's trying to beat the level of Virgo. It's like, I'm going to do anything I can to, 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 to work with the aspects that I have. Because what you have to do with your birth chart is you have to work with these aspects no matter what. But you choose how you're going to act upon them. For her, it turned out to be a really dark aspect. And she did not pass the test because she has her. Let's look at her uh, north node, north and south node. Her south node is in the 12th house in Aquarius. What does this scream to me? You could read on fucking Google or through any book that you want. But to me, what this placement shows and what she failed the test is the South Node is supposed to be what you um, are not supposed to aim for this life. This is more past life energy. But for me, this showed that uh, she ended up in jail. 12th house, jail. She ended up having a lot of publicity. Aquarius, very all over the internet, all over the place. And she did not pass the test because at the end of the day, she ended up in jail in the 12th house. She did not end up fucking uh, working in the sixth house, maybe caring more about her health, her daily work habits, routine. Uh, no, she, she's fulfilling the South Node prophecy. Is that the right terminology? I don't know. She, she, she didn't, uh, you know, do what she was supposed to do. And this is why I'm going to tell you, look, because I'm going to, and this is why I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the day of the murder on top of Jody's chart and you're going to bug the fuck out, bro. Actually, before I do that, before I do that, I'm going to talk about her eighth house. Her eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and she's got Uranus in Scorpio in the eighth. What's the eighth house? What's the number one thing that comes to your mind when you think about the eighth house other than death? Sex, baby. Wow, chicka, wow, wow, raw sexual energy. Scorpio is its natural home in the eighth house. When you got Uranus in there, it's very taboo, very taboo, dark taboo. She was into some weird sexual shit, some weird sexual shit. And I will insert some clips and some of the weird shit that they were into. What's that? I'm gonna tie you to a tree and Oh my gosh. That is so debasing. I like it. <laughs> You'll rejoice in being a whore. That sole purpose in life is to be mine, to have animal sex with, and to please me in any way I desire. But it was taboo. And I know she said that it was Travis mostly that was into the weird sexual things. And he was into it too. Maybe I'll pull up his chart after this. But she was no saint. She was no saint at all. She was actually the opposite of a saint. Now let's pull up the chart that is the day of the murder on top of Jody's chart. Screen share. Is this the day of the murder or Travis's? Oh, I think this is Travis's chart instead of the day of the murder. Okay, we'll, we'll run with it. We'll run with it. So this is Travis's birth chart on top of Jody's. Want to know the number one thing that stood out to me? Well, what, first of all, what's the number one thing that stands out to you? Do yourself a favor. Comment. Comment. I'm going to give you a second. What is the number one thing that stands out to you in this chart? There's many things, so there's no wrong answer. I'm going to tell you what stood out to me the most. So let's look at this here. So just a reminder, Jody's chart is the inner chart and Travis's is the outer. My eraser. 
So what this said to me, so we said, I said my belief about her Lilith being conjunct Pluto in, in the seventh. I was like, oh, she's going to kill her fucking mate, dude. She's going to kill her man. And look at Travis's seventh house on top of Jody's chart. He's got Pluto conjunct the North Node. He was destined to die from this bitch. He was destined to die from this bitch. And you can't tell me any fucking different. I don't care. A astrologer that has been practicing astrology for 20 fucking years, if you try to tell me that's not what that meant, I'm going to call you a bunk-ass astrologer because that is exactly what the fuck it means. That is exactly what the fuck it means. There's a problem in astrology that they want to, uh, you need to go by what you read off of books and what, uh, you know, uh, mature astrologers and practicing astrologers have been saying for hundreds and hundreds of years nah bitch the proof is right there in the pudding it's very simple you don't need to get all crazy about it nah dude jody was going to kill her fucking boyfriend and travis was destined to be killed it says it right there in the seventh house in libra in libra it's not just the seventh house it's also libra libra rules relationships motherfucker so crazy. That was one of the number one things I saw. But I also saw more. Let's continue. So Travis's Venus is exactly conjunct Jody's moon. Oh, ha, 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 ha. they were attracted to each other extremely attracted to each other. And especially they probably had a good mental connection too, because they both have Venus in, uh, Venus in Gemini and Gem and you know, he has his Mars and Jupiter in Gemini as well. So his Mars being in Gemini and Jody's Venus being in Gemini, he's sexually attracted to her. And it's very mercurial too. It's not just only about sex. They obviously probably had really great conversations, probably good phone sex too. Not gonna lie. And so that connected them that it, it, he felt comfortable with her. She felt comfortable with him, but it was never going to be a stable relationship. One thing I want to say about that is because uh, it could have been. It could have been now looking at the chart because look, he has his Saturn conjunct her North node. So it, it could have been destined. It could have been destined and it could have been, and it's in the fifth house, his, his son and Mercury and all that shit fell in Jody's fifth house of romance. So they were destined to have a fling, but the fifth house doesn't necessarily mean long-term relationships. The fifth house is more, you know, one night stands, you know, first loves or whatever. Um, but, it, but like I said, it could it have been long-term maybe with Saturn conjunct the North node, because Saturn is all about commitment long-term. Uh, the North node is your destiny, but Travis wasn't about it. Travis didn't want to be with her. Travis, just thought she was a whore to use. And what was I saying? I was going to say something else. And then I went off track. What was I going to say? Going to say. I forgot. But you know what? Let's pull up just Travis's chart. Am I able to do that? Photos, photos. Actually, hold up. I got to I think I got to download Travis's chart. Can you guys see that? Okay, so here is Travis's. Here's Homeboy's chart. Rest in peace. I may not be seeming like sad like I should, but this dude's been dead for whatever. And this is research to me. Aquarius Moon, what up? So let's look at Travis's chart, shall we? He's got Chiron right on his ascendant, motherfucker. Uh, you know, a lot of self worth issues. Uh, what's funny about that, though, is Travis was a motivational speaker. So he probably had a lot of things happen when he was a kid, maybe a lot of bullying when he was in school, uh, a lot of self-worth issues. 
um, the wound of Chiron, but then when he grew up, he learned how to take those, those experiences and learn how to teach and heal other people. And that's what he did. Uh, very motivational. He's got Uranus right on the DC, right on, right in the seventh house, two degrees away from being exactly conjunct. What's Uranus? Unstable, rocky, uh, unpredictable, Scorpio, dark energy in the seventh house. He was destined to have a fucked up person and to enter his life, AKA Jody Arias. Um, and what I wanted to say is talk about his eighth house energy, because there was a lot of conflicting beliefs. Like was Jody lying about all the sick shit that Travis was into too? Because by the end, she ended up saying a lot of fucked up things about Travis and his sexual nature. And a lot of people didn't believe her because she had already lied so much before that when she said all this shit about Travis, like nobody believed it. But, and I don't mean to like defame him or whatever, and this is all for entertainment purposes. He was into some weird fucking sexual shit too. He's got Neptune in the eighth house retrograde in sag and it's opposing his mars wide degree but neptune is a big slow moving planet he was into some weird shit some weird taboo shit Ta you can get the taboo nature um with his relationships with the uh uranus in the seventh house too but he was into weird shit and like he may have let it take control of him take control of him because Neptune can be very illusionary. And when it's opposing Mars, you're not really thinking clearly. Like maybe you have like these sick ideas, right? But a normal person wouldn't actually go ahead and do it. Like we may watch like certain porns or something. And like, you think to yourself, dude, this is sick. This is gross. Like, and you don't really do it in your real life, but like, maybe you look at it online. He probably did do it like in real life. And I'm, I gotta look at more documentaries, but I'm pretty sure they did some weird shit, which, Hey, to each his own, everybody does some weird shit. I got a Scorpio eighth house. So I get it. No hate, but I just wanted to put it in here that Jody wasn't lying completely when she said that he was weird in that aspect. Now she did bring in, she said that he was a child p i don't want to say the word to like get blocked but now can you look at someone's chart and see if they're into children if you look hard enough you could if you look hard enough you could but like are you going to really say definitively if that's true because if i wanted to i can look at the mars venus um and jupiter and gemini and think maybe he's attracted to youthful energy but that's stretching, right? You don't want to, I mean, you could, but you don't want to pick apart someone's chart that much that you can say, oh, because he has this uh, Gemini energy, he's sexually attracted to the Gemini youthful energy. That's not a reason to say, oh, he wasn't to kids. Oh, what the hell? My light. Oh no. Maybe I'll have to pause this because you won't be able to see me. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Let me pause this. I got to charge my light. Damn it. Okay. We are back. We are lit. And so what was I last talking about? I think I was last talking about Jody at the end of the trial saying that Travis was into uh, kid stuff. You know where I'm going with this. And if you could see that in somebody's chart. And I think I said this you could look at the chart and see if that's a possibility. But I feel like if you do that, you are really stretching. You're really stretching because a lot of people have similar placements. Does that mean that they are a child predator? No, absolutely not. But I mean, in this case, maybe you could, but I'm not going to do it because I feel like it's disrespectful. But if I were to, you could, let's pull up his chart again. Hold up. Travis, where you at, boy? 
like if I were, it would be like, oh, okay, maybe because he has that heavy Gemini energy with the Mars and Venus that he's into the younger vibe, the younger energy. And look at his Mars. It's making a yod to Uranus and Scorpio taboo sexual matters and to his, is it, is it to his moon? Yeah. To his moon in the eighth house of sexual matters as well. And the moon is not happy in Capricorn uh, and dealing with both Uranus and the eighth house uh, sexual matters, Uranus and Scorpio. So do I think he was, I can't say that for sure, but if I wanted to pick apart his chart, I could probably find evidence to back it up, but you can do that with anybody's chart. That's the thing. And I don't think astrologers should be using it. And that's maybe they could let's actually any astrologer watching this, let's do a case study where we pull a bunch of child predators charts, put them together and see if we see similar things within their charts. Like for me, okay, when I look at serial killers charts, I'm going off topic, but this is a little side note. When I look at serial killers charts, a lot of shit that they have going on is Uranus and Mars aspects. In almost every single one, there is some Uranus, Mars, ill effect going on in their chart. And I feel like that is contributing to uh, serial killing tendencies. Um, but okay, let me get out of this chart. And I want you guys to look at the day of the murder. I'm going to pull up Jody's chart on top of the day of the murder and then Travis's chart on the day of the murder. Let me find it. Is this the right one? Yes. Okay. So just a reminder, Jody's chart is on the inside. The day of the murder is on the outside. What is the number one thing that you see? What is a very significant thing that is going on in the transits the day of the murder down to the exact time of the murder or when Jody took the picture of Travis? I don't know if I inserted the clip yet, but you'll know what I'm talking about. Let me get my handy dandy drawing tool, shall I? If I can find it. There we go. Let's look at this. She has her reverse nodal return happening down to the degree very almost close down to the minute of her reverse nodal return this was a checkpoint this was a checkpoint to see what timeline is she going down because we get to choose what timelines we go down she's got chiron and uh neptune connected to her to the north node or her south node in her natal, this was a checkpoint to see, is she going to follow the North Node destiny? Or is she going to follow her South Node destiny? Or is she going to fulfill her North Node destiny? She made a choice this day and she chose death. Pluto exactly conjunct the midheaven at zero, double zero degree, a portal degree, a portal degree. What do portal degrees mean to me? That means that dark entities are more easily influenced. You're more easily influenced by dark entities. Because when you have that, that double zero degree, like I said, it's a portal. It is a portal. And she chose death, death, Pluto, death. But the thing is, she's not a strong soul. She's not a strong soul because there can be a person that had this very chart and she may have been put through similar uh, circumstances throughout the day that didn't lead to murder, but she chose to let it go to murder. She's got Lilith in the eighth. She's got her ascendant in the eighth or the, um, the transiting ascendant is in her eighth of death. This really played a role and she was weak, very weak. Her, the moon was also in cancer. She was feeling, bro. She was feeling. She was feeling all those intense emotions. Her son is in cancer already. So when you have a transiting moon in cancer, when you are a cancer son, you're feeling everything. You're, and cancers already um, automatically feel that deep, intense emotion. But with her... 
it was almost overwhelming. It was almost overwhelming for her. Oh, man. And when you have a reverse nodal return, it could trick you. It's almost trickster energy because it's like, dude, it's the reverse. You can feel like what you're doing is going to be the right choice, but it's not. It's a trickster energy. It's a checkpoint to see if you got it, to see if you got it. Are you, are you strong enough in your will to complete your soul's, your birth chart destiny? Or are you not, or not, or are you a weak bitch? Jody was a weak bitch. And you know, some may say she's not weak. She fucking murdered somebody. Yeah, maybe not weak in that aspect, but you know, we're not here to be committing murders like that. At least not for your soul development, because what's happening to Jody Arias right now is she is already reborn. Well, she's dead. Well, she's not dead yet. But as soon as that bitch dies, she's going to be like the people at the gates of wherever we come from. They're going to be like, try again. Nice try. Try again. You got to do this life all over again. Now, I don't know what your philosophical beliefs are. I'm not even sure what mine are half the time. But one of my beliefs that I piggyback off of, I think that if you don't fulfill your birth charts duty to fulfill this life, you're going to live the same exact life. Not just reincarnating into a different body with similar energy. No, you're living the exact same life. And that. It, that's what deja vu says to me. Like if you can get deja vu, that just says to me that that theory of mine is right, that you are going to live the same exact life if you don't fulfill your birth, your birth chart destiny. And you're going to keep, you're going to have to keep coming back until you get it right. Until you get it right. Time does stop. Time can rewind. Time is not li linear. Even though Saturn is like the ruler of time and says, you know, there is time in this, uh, this reality, it can be manipulated. It can be manipulated and it is manipulated if you don't fulfill your birth chart. Jody did not. And she didn't get the death penalty. She almost, I wish she did. She probably should have got the death penalty because she is just fulfilling more of her South Node destiny being in jail. So if it was just a quick death, then she could start sooner, but whatever. I hope she enjoys her uh, high course meals her high class meals her pot i hope she's enjoying her five star meals in prison Free green mercury, am I right? let me get my eraser out what else was going on this day for her let's see well she's got transiting let me get my drawing tool she's got the transiting sun opposing her natal neptune Ooh, illusion. It's like the sun fucking had a lasso grabbed onto Neptune and like she cannot even see the reality of what she's about to do. It's conjunct her fucking natal uh, Venus too. And Venus is about to make the return, her Venus return. And so she, and you know, close to her moon too. It's a wide orb to her moon, but still. She is trapped in the illusion of her heart, of her love, and she wasn't thinking clearly. She wasn't thinking clearly. She may have thought she was thinking clearly and she planned everything out to a T with that Mars of hers, but she wasn't. She was under an illusion this day and nothing, once she had it in her mind that she was going to kill him, there was no talking any sense into her. She can't hear it. She wouldn't be able to hear it. The sun was also making a nice little trine over to Lilith. Hello, Lilith. Nice to see you, old friend. You want to kill some motherfuckers today? Even though trine is a good aspect, it's still, it's still connected to Lilith, the darker aspects of yourself. And when you have your fucking Neptune in the play as well, and the birth chart that she has natally with Nept, I mean, with Pluto on the fucking right there, Right there, double zero portal degree, L transiting Lilith in her eighth. There's a lot of Lilith, Pluto, eighth house, Neptunian, 12th houseian shit going on. And it just screams murder all over it. <laughs> now let's look at Travis's chart on the day of the murder. Where are you, Travis? Jody Travis. There we go. 
Raise it up. Let me make it bigger. Okay, so Travis on the day of the murder. Oh, where is the Pluto in his chart? In his eighth house. In his eighth house. Now, this is very simple. Very simple astrology. Astrology doesn't have to be so hard. You don't have to know all this crazy shit, all these tricks of the trade. Nah, point blank period. Pluto, double zero degree in his, in his eighth house, conjunct his moon. He was going to die today, bitch. He had a more, I don't want to say that. He had a better probability to die today. And uh, yeah, it took place. Lilith is also in his eighth. Almost conjunct his Neptune wide orb, but still. Whoo, he didn't see it coming. He couldn't see it coming because Lilith being conjunct his Neptune, like he was like, and he's into that dark shit. He's into that dark sexual fantasy type thing. So he was, a, he was lured in. He was lured in by that energy. Him and Jody were, were already broken up. He already knew she was a psycho. He already knew she was obsessive. He had broken off with her. He was going to go on a vacation with a new girl in a few days. Like I think six days after he was murdered, he was planned to go on a vacation with another bitch. But he still let that crazy bitch into his home. Fucked her a lot took pictures, all this like weird shit, not really weird, but like, yeah, weird. He still fucked the shit out of the girl that he was scared of. He told people that he was scared of Jody. You ain't that scared of her though. That's the thing with males. Sometimes people think, oh, males, they're so much stronger than uh, females that, that uh, you know, women have to be careful around men. No, 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 no. In this day and age, males need to be careful around females. Females have so much more power over males, not in a strength ways. All a female needs to do is tempt a male sexually, and they got them by the balls. They got them by the balls. Women cannot be manipulated sexually. Some may, depending on the chart, but overall, generally, women cannot be manipulated sexually. Men, they lose all logic, all logic when it comes to the fucking man downstairs. And it's, oh man, I feel sorry for you guys. Sorry. Not really, but that's, you, that's your own fault. Actually, no, you're built that way, whatever. But even more so for Travis on this day, with the Lilith right on top of his little Neptune, Oh, come on. Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's fuck for one last time. Oh, isn't that the saying? Oh, we're so toxic together, but let's just fuck this one last time. It's going to be the last time. Yeah, Travis. It was the last time. It was. Maybe you should have been faithful to the girl that you were with. That is pr that's very cruel of me, but like I, whatever. I disconnect emotionally from situations like this. So whatever, maybe I'll cut that out. <laughs> now, also, if you want to go a little deeper into the chart and looking at, you know, what prophecies this chart could have said for him is let's look at the Neptune conjunct his son again, because he died in the shower. Neptune rules water. So one may can, so maybe you could say, oh, you know, uh, he died because Neptune is in this eighth house and it's opposing the sun. If you really wanted to pick apart the chart, you can say, oh, you know what? Maybe he died a water death, some type of water death. But you don't want to just be looking at Neptune. When you want to look at um, accidents, you have to look at Uranus. So let's see what his, uh, Uranus is doing. His Uranus is, ooh, okay. His Uranus is squaring Venus. Oh, shit. He's got an accident dealing with love. Dealing with love. Venus in Gemini at that. Both him and uh, Jody have Venus in Gemini natally. And, and, and transit-wise, it's squaring his natal Uranus ruling accidents. It's also in Scorpio. So it could be sexual based as well. And yeah, it was, it was, she killed him after they had sex in the shower, Neptune, Uranus. It's like, 
It's all here. It's all here if you look close enough. Ooh, it's a little blurry. Can you guys see me? I'm trying to talk, but it's like blurry. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Can you get on blurry? What if I go like this and then like that? It's still blurry. Okay, whatever. Um, I'm just going to talk. So again, I'm going to say this again. This is for entertainment purposes only. You cannot look at someone's chart and see maybe some of the same aspects that you saw in this video and say, oh my God, they're going to be a murderer. No, that's not the case. You can't look at astrology like that because every placement, every transit, every aspect is going to be dependent on the soul on you. You get to choose how it will be expressed, but you better believe it will be expressed. So you better make sure that you're expressing it correctly. And if you want to make sure that you are expressing your birth chart correctly, feel free to get a reading from me. I will leave my information in the description box below. Book with me through ClearSight Consulting. It's a lot cheaper that way. I'm not sure if I'm going to be posting this on ClearSight Consulting or my own uh, YouTube, but just so you guys know, if you book me through Clear Sight Consulting instead of my own website, it's a lot cheaper. And you're going to be uh, helping out a large group of people. The money, a portion of the proceeds, go to gr goes to growing this amazing community that the Peace Dealer is growing. And it's fucking amazing. And you want to put your money towards something like that. Uh, yeah. If you want to know if you are expressing your birth chart in the correct way, book a reading with me because, like I said, I'll say a thousand times over again, your birth chart aspects must and will be fulfilled, but you choose how they will be fulfilled. You have options, though, and you have to pick the right one if you want to get out of this place. This is a prison planet. They are watching your every move, your every action. They're watching, taking notes. Who are they? Who knows? We'll figure it out someday. But as of right now, you better be making the right decisions if you don't want to memory wipe and come back here to do it all over again. I feel like we have all been doing this over and over and over again. And when you get deja vu, that is the moments that you need to remember and be like, okay, something, something significant is about to happen in my life. And what choices am I making right now? Are they the right choices to be making? You got to ask yourself th those questions. My birth chart readings isn't just to tell you, oh, you're a fucking cancer. That means you're going to be like this. Oh, your moon's here. That means you're going to be like that. No, my birth chart readings are conversations to be had. I'm not, that's, other astrologers can do that. I'm not that astrologer. Um, you could get a bunch of online birth chart readings that will tell you fun little facts about yourself. No, we're here to talk. We're here to talk it out. What are you going through in your life? What choices should you be making? What choices have you been making? And how can you change it up? Uh, I'm rambling now, but thank you everybody for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, this has been Cosmic Drugs, and bye! The system is not for humanity.